Let's do an experiment together. What you'll need for this experiment is a piece of paper, a pen, and a stopwatch. I'm going to drop this ball from this height and I'll need you to time the time it takes for it to hit the ground. And I want you to watch this video a total of 10 times. Ready for trial number one? On your marks, get set, go. Now either hit the J key on your keyboard or double tap on the left hand side of the screen to watch this video again another nine more times. Have you watched it 10 times in total? Excellent. Now take a look at the data that you've collected. Are all the numbers the same? Do they all match up? And strangely enough, all the numbers are different. Why is that? Welcome to the kingdom of physics. What is physics anyways? In summary, physics is the study of how objects interact with each other from a mathematical perspective. You might have seen this equation before. It's called a quadratic function, and it is able to predict the position of a ball thrown vertically at any moment in time. There are some initial conditions though. First, the ball has to be thrown at 1 meter above the ground. Second, the ball must be thrown at 10 meters per second. You can probably see how the 1 and 10 relate to the formula, but we'll talk about the formalities in another episode. The most important thing in conducting experiments is to have a standardized way of collecting and showing your data. Let's take the experiment that we conducted at the beginning of the video. You might have collected data results like these ones over here. Just make sure that you include units at the header of your column as these numbers alone don't mean anything by themselves. Even though you watch the same video over and over again, for some reason your collected data are not in agreement with one another. Clearly 0.62 is not the same number as 0.73. So where did all this error come from? In science, we often describe errors as uncertainties, as the word error is often confused with making a mistake, even though no mistakes were made. In this case, we have an uncertainty called a procedural uncertainty, which describes the limits of your ability of using an instrument. Some may call this human error, which is true, just don't write that down in a lab report if you're hoping for a good grade. While watching the ball fall, there probably was a hand-eye reaction delay between observing the fall and pressing the start and stop button. Usually the uncertainty of this delay is around 0.2 seconds for each incidence, so let's factor that into our data. You might notice that the 2 in 0.2 is rounded to the nearest tenth, meaning that there is no way we can be certain of our data to the nearest hundredth. That's the reason why the hundredths column should be erased from our collected data. Now factoring in the uncertainty of plus minus 0.2 seconds, it tells the reader that the first trial probably had a value of as low as 0.4 seconds and as high as 0.8 seconds. The second trial probably had a value of as low as 0.5 seconds and as high as 0.9, and so on and so forth. By seeing the range of all of our collected data, we can see that there's a small range of numbers somewhere between 0.6 and 0.8 seconds that the numbers are in agreement with one another. Every measurement that we take in this world has an uncertainty with its measure. To ensure consistency in our collected data, scientists in the 19th century created physical objects that would define a unit, such as the definition of a kilogram or the length of a meter, and these objects were kept in France. There were a few problems with this. First, since it was just one of each object, everyone in the world would have to fly into France to measure a kilogram or just one meter. Second, if the original prototypes were destroyed, we would forever lose the definition of one kilogram and one meter. Today, these items are kept at the International Bureau of Weights and Measures just for more or less show and tell. Instead, these base measurements have been redefined by concepts instead of by physical objects, as objects can go missing or be damaged. Meanwhile, concepts can be passed on from generation to generation. I've included a playlist below called What Are Fundamental Units if you want to know more about this topic. So why are units so important in science? I mean, if I give you the number three, what does it really mean? Three apples? Three kilometers? Three hours? Three by itself doesn't really bear any meaning on its own. Let me give you a few examples of where measurements have gone wrong. In 1998, a satellite was launched into space to orbit around the planet Mars. Unfortunately, due to miscommunication, the $3 million experiment crashed into the planet. The software engineers programmed impulse in pound-four seconds, meanwhile the rocket thrusters thrusted in newton seconds, 
which is 4.4 times greater than intended. Have you ever been on Space Mountain? There are currently five of them in the world. Japan had a clone version of the original Florida one. However, there was a conversion error for one of the parts called the wheel bearings. You remember fidget spinners? Yeah, those bearings. The bearings ordered were too small and caused the addle to rattle back and forth and eventually break. Luckily, no one was injured in this incident. Today, one inch is exactly 2.54 millimeters. There are plenty of examples where things have gone wrong simply because of miscommunication or assumption of units. So that's why it's so important to include units in all of your measurements. How about I give you three seconds until the next slide. There's a difference between certainty and precision. The certainty of a measurement shows the reader which digits in your measurement can be reliably used. For example, the scientific calculator is confident of showing pi to 10 digits, so this value of pi has 10 significant figures. The slide rule, on the other hand, shows a value of roughly 3.14, so it has a certainty of 3 significant figures. In 1 Kings of the Old Testament, it describes a metal basin with a circumference of around 30 arm lengths and a diameter of around 10 arm lengths, essentially describing pi as roughly 3, or to a certainty of one significant figure. Precision, on the other hand, shows the place value that you've rounded your final answer to. At the end of the day, all measurements are rounded. For example, even though pi is an irrational number, the calculator shows the precision of pi to the nearest 10 billionth. The slide rule shows the precision to the nearest hundredth, and the Bible approximates pi to the nearest whole, as back then the concept of decimal numbers have not been discovered yet. Let's practice through a few more examples. You can find this list on Course Pack page 3. You can download a copy of the Course Pack in the description box below. 10.2734 has 6 digits, so its certainty is 6 significant figures. The second example looks almost identical to the first example. However, this time there's a zero after the four. The zero tells the reader that after the four, there's definitely a zero, so that makes this measurement even more certain. That's why this measurement has a certainty of seven significant figures. In the first example, we have no idea what's after the four. It could have been a one, two, three, or another four, but was rounded down. That's why the first example is less certain than the second one. 10.3 has three significant figures. This fourth example is written in scientific notation. In this case, the coefficient will tell you the certainty of the measurement. Since there's only one digit in the coefficient, it has a certainty of just one. A thousand meters is a confusing example. Is this approximately a kilometer? Or do you have to purchase a thousand meter sticks and then line them up together? Truth is, we don't know. According to physics textbooks, if a unit is included, then we should assume that all the digits count. 1 times 10 to the 3 meters has a coefficient that is one significant figure. This is the best way to state that you live approximately one kilometer away from the school. On the other hand, 1.000 times 10 to the 3 meters is telling the reader to go buy a thousand meter sticks and then build a house specifically a thousand meter sticks away from the school. Just remember that a measurement of a thousand point four meters will be rounded down to a thousand meters as well. The next example is even more specific. All zeros after a decimal always count, so this example has a certainty of five significant figures. This example tells the reader that the thousand meters can only have an error of less than four centimeters. Leading zeros do not count. Keeping in mind that 0.001 meters is equal to one millimeter. In the second last example, only the two and five count as the measurement. So it has a certainty of two significant figures. In the last example, there is a one right after the decimal. Zeros within a number are always significant. So this example has a certainty of eight significant figures. Precision, on the other hand, is the place value of the least significant digit. The first example has a precision of four decimal places. The second example is even more precise and is rounded to five decimal places. The third example is rounded to the nearest tenth. For the fourth example, you'll have to expand this one out. Since one is the only digit shown in the coefficient, 
This is the representation of approximately 10, so let's round it to the nearest tens. If every digit counts, a thousand meters is rounded to the nearest hole. In scientific notation, this represents roughly a thousand meters, so it's rounded to the nearest thousand. Again, if you want to tell the reader that you need exactly a thousand meter sticks, it's best to write this out in scientific notation. A thousand point zero is rounded to the nearest tenth, and the last two examples are rounded to eight decimal places, or to the nearest hundred millionths. Let's see the difference between certainty and precision from a different perspective. If you receive a sundial as a gift one year, and you properly align the sundial in your backyard to show the shortest shadow at high noon, it will faithfully show day after day, decade after decade, when it is high noon. It is a device with a high degree of certainty, or accuracy. Unfortunately, it will never tell you when it's the start of fourth period class, which begins at 12.10pm, so you'll always be late for that class if you trust this as your only clock source. On the other hand, if you acquire a cheap stopwatch and start the clock at midnight and use it as a clock the next day, you might think that you've made it to class early if it shows 12 hours, 5 minutes, and 30.25 seconds. Meanwhile, the classroom clock already shows 12.11 p.m., so you're already one minute late for class. Even though the stopwatch is very precise, showing time to the nearest hundredth of a second, well, in this example, it's not very certain. In scientific experiments, it is our goal to aim for measurements that are both precise and certain. The way that you have been taught how to round back in elementary school is unfortunately wrong. Let's say that we have a measurement between 3 and 4, but we need to round to the nearest hole. If the measurement lands to the right of 0 0.5, we would automatically round up, and that's correct. And if the measurement lands to the left of 0 0.5, we would automatically round down. That also is correct. However, if the measurement lands exactly on 0.5, we were taught in elementary school to round up. Unfortunately, this makes it statistically unfair. If the measurement was 3.1, 2, 3, or 4, there will be 4 chances of rounding down. But if the measurement was 3.5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, that gives it 5 chances of rounding up, and that's not fair. 4 chances to round down versus 5 to round up. 3.5 is a number that is exactly in the middle of 3 and 4, so it is nowhere closer to 3 than it is to 4. To combat this unfairness, scientists use this general rule. If the rounding digit is exactly at 5, or at the middle, round in a way such that the place value digit is even. In other words, if odd, round up, if even, round down. So if our objective is to round to the nearest hole, 1.5 would round up to 2, 2.5 would round down to 2, 3.5 would round up to 4, 4.5 would round down to 4, 5.5 would round up to 6, and 6.5 would round down to 6. Do you see a pattern here? There's statistically a 50-50 chance of rounding either up or down when you're stuck exactly in the middle, and this is the new rounding rule to make things fair. Let's go through a few more examples together. As we know, 1.5 will round up to 2, and 2.5 would round down to 2. 2.51 is a hairline greater than 2.5, so that's why we're going to round it up to 3. 2.499, on the other hand, is a hairline less than 2.5, so that's why we're going to round it down to 2. Try out the next few on your own, and pause the video and we'll take it up together afterwards. Ready for the answers? Remember, this time we're rounding to the nearest tenth. So 3.55 would round up to 3.6. 3.45, well, 4 is even, so we'll round down to 3.4. With 3.449, 49 is less than 50, so we'll round down. And the last example, we're a hairline greater than 5 one hundredths, so we'll round up to 3.5. With enough practice, this new rule will become second nature to you in your calculations. Just remember to round only at the end of all of your calculations. Speaking of calculations, the way that you were taught on how to add and subtract was also a little incorrect. Whenever you add or subtract, your final answer should be rounded to the same precision as the least precise measurement. Let's say a roughly 1.7 meter tall human steals a pen from a classroom, but on his way out, he accidentally steps on a sticky ruler. 
If the ruler had a thickness of 1.34 meters, what is the new height of this person? Well, first, let's convert 1.34 millimeters into meters so that we're comparing apples with apples. 1.7 meters plus 0.00134 meters works out to 1.70134 meters. How can we have a crude measurement for a person's height become such a precise solution? This does not make any sense. Instead, we should follow the new rule and round as necessary. 1.7 meters has a precision of one decimal place, and 0.00134 meters has a precision of five decimal places. One is worse than five, so our final answer should be rounded down to one decimal place. The final answer for the combined height of the person and ruler should be 1.7 meters. Whenever you multiply, divide, or use any of the trig functions, your final answer should be rounded to the same certainty as the least certain measurement. Let's say I want to paint this table gold. I know the width is specifically 873.5 millimeters, but the length is roughly 3 meters. How much gold foil should I order? First, let's convert 873.5 millimeters into meters so that we're multiplying with the same units. 0.8735 meters times 3 meters equals 2.6205 meters times meters, or meters squared. Again, if we approximated the length of the table, our final answer should also be approximate. So we should take a look at the certainty of each measurement and round to the least certain measure. 873.5 millimeters is four significant figures, and three meters is just one sig fig. So our final answer should be rounded to one sig fig, which is three meters squared. Practice makes perfect, so how about you pause the video and work through the remaining examples. Ready for the answers? If we add 3.263 with 2.5, we initially get the answer of 5.763. However, 2.5 has a precision of one decimal place, so our final answer should be rounded to one decimal place as well, or 5.8. When we subtract 2.6300 with 2.400, we initially get the answer of 0.23. However, 2.400 has a precision to the nearest thousandths, so our final answer should also be rounded to the nearest thousandths as well, of 0 0.230. If we add 2.64 with 7.4000 times 10 to the 4, first we need to expand out to the scientific notation. 7.4000 translates to 74,000 rounded to the nearest whole. So we're adding a number to the nearest whole with a measurement to the nearest hundredth. So our final answer should also be rounded to the nearest whole. The next example is different. This time round, we're adding a measurement that is rounded to the nearest hundredth with a measurement that's rounded to the nearest thousands. Which one's less precise? Obviously the measurements to the nearest thousands. So 74,000 plus a smidget will still give us roughly 74,000. However, we can't write it out as 74000 because we don't know if it's 2 sig fig or 5 sig fig. So how about we convert it into scientific notation? When we multiply 1.2 by 13.2, we initially get 15.84. Using the certainty rule, 1.2 is only two significant digits, so our final answer should be two significant digits as well. If we divide 13.2 by 1.3, our calculator will spit out 10.15384615. However, we're dividing a 3 sig fig number by 2 sig fig, so our final answer should just be 2 significant figures. 10 is 2 significant figures, but 10 is also 1 significant figure. So to clarify what our answer should be, we'll convert it into scientific notation of 1.0 times 10 to the 1. That way we retain the certainty of 2 significant figures. 2.5 squared is the same meaning as 2.5 times 2.5, which gives us 6.25. However, our initial givens are only 2 sig fig, so our final answer must also be rounded to 2 sig fig. 6.25 will be rounded to 6.2. That was a sneaky one. For more sneaky problems like these, please download the course pack and work on the following pages. We'll be conducting a lab the next day, so please have a 150mm ruler handy. See you in the next episode.